Welcome to week eight, Trash Mouth, fantasy football, week number seven podcast. We have the five-time champ, Sal Six Shooters, and his father, the 19, 2006 champ, on the line at the same time. First time ever. What's up, League? What day? Comeback fell short, and uh, sorry, bro, and you lost Godwin to an ankle injury. You made a good comeback, but all you were worthy of was a tie, man. Never a win. Hey, what can I say? It's a, it's a tie, and uh, you were lucky this time. Saved your season, bro, if there is one. Yeah, well, my season is still good. All right. All right let's get to the question. Let's get to the hard questions. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. So, yeah. what bad think? You, uh, I don't know if you uh, have a nice Thai selection when you go out with your beautiful wife out to dinner sometimes or an event at the Water Buffalo Lodge, but... Uh, you just tied for the 16th time in your career, which is the most in league history. What's going on with the ties in, in, in the league? What do you mean by that? Well, you just happen to tie a lot. You've, you've got 16 career ties in the league, which is the most all time. Look at it like this. We work with ties. Look at what happened when I did uh, 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 try for five. I got up there, and I could have won that myself too. That is true. You needed one touchdown. I mean, I've got my team that is starting to go and to do what I have to do. And I'm sorry, but the thing is, is that it happens like that. And then, all right, you were, uh, uh, the thing with uh, Godwin, well, that's uh, the thing, because it was going at the end of this, uh, end of that uh, uh, game, the next thing he know we fall. They were going down for another touchdown, and Godwin got hurt at, at the end of the game. Okay. Yeah, but did you see in the first quarter, Godwin caught a touchdown, but was nullified by a holding penalty. Oh, did you see that? got lucky well, that's there. That's part of the, what do you call it? That's part of this thing here, is if these people want to do that and hold and everything like that, and they get penalized, hey, we have no control over that. Okay? All but right. that's how close it was between a tie and a win. That's all I'm saying. And we've all that, had those, you know. Well, almost the same way, like we tried for five. That when is... we were having a shootout there, I could have won, won it because I had people going. I had two people going, and they didn't give me anything. Okay? So, what can I say? There you go. Very good, Warp Ass Inc. I totally understand. Uh, we've so, all... We've all... Look at it like this. This is what's happening to me, okay? I still have a chance to make the playoffs. Yes, you do. There's seven That's games right. left. There's seven games left, and I've seen GMs go on seven-game winning streaks, okay. six-game winning streaks, so you definitely have a chance until you're mathematically eliminated, including that, myself. All right, so what bad saying, based on that... Like you said, you've scored 65 and 64 points the last two weeks. So your team is beginning to pick up significant That's momentum. Right. That is correct. All right. That is right. And also, too, I was looking at your team. I have a lot of questionables and everything like that now because they got injured. I have, uh, and then, of course, well, Godwin is no longer... But, uh, yeah, why would you waste your 
We we waiver wire position on a kicker. You could have picked him up rarely. Why would you sacrifice your waiver wire position for a kicker, dude? That makes no sense to me. But go ahead, okay. continue. Does it make a sense? Okay. Not to waste a waiver wire pos- your position. You could be at the top, and now you're back at the bottom again. But go ahead, continue. Well, well, what do you mean? Back at the bottom of the waiver wire order. For a kicker that you could have picked it up with a regular move. That's all I'm saying. You could have moved up a few spots, been like top four in the waiver wire order for a key player next week. But now because you used waiver wire on a kicker, you're seven or eight. So I don't know. That's that's my thinking. But that's just me. I wouldn't waste a waiver wire position on a kicker. So. Um, there we'll go. Continue, Dave. We're, we're kind of stepping on Dave over here. Dave, continue with the podcast. No, it's side. okay. It's okay. You guys are having a father and son debate. This is what it's. That's why we got you both on the same call. I'm sure you guys debated who should who should change the oil, who should vacuum the pool, who should cut the grass, who should uh, you know get the allowance, and who doesn't. I love it. I love the father and son debate. This is great. Anyway, six shooters, week seven. Has been a very good week to you. Seven times on week seven, you've scored the most points for the week. Now, this week, obviously, you tied with your father, but is there a chance that you think seven is a really lucky number for you for a lotto pick? Sure, why not? I mean, I use my head, but I also go with my gut. I'm not afraid to, you know, you know, look at the superstitious side of football. Everyone's got their superstitions. We are the same, you know, wear the same shirt every Sunday. Um, lucky seven, whatever, whatever your lucky number is. Hey, whatever it takes to win, you know, rub the rabbit's foot, roll the lucky dice, whatever it takes to win. All right. That's a lot of lucky, a lot of superstition. Obviously, we're right around the corner from Halloween. So very nice segue there, Sal. All right, so six shooters. You have a very big Eastern Divisional matchup with Brian's drive for five. You beat him the first time. He's in first place by a half game due to your tie with your dad. What are your thoughts about Brian's drive for five in a pivotal week number eight matchup? Well, I survived week three. He's come back on week three, so I got the first win. Um, I'm a little miffed that uh, the Bombers beat me to Amari Cooper, but hey, case the rah, the rah, whatever it will be, will be. Um, but hey, it's the battle for the top of the division. You know, we'll we'll see if this tie helps or hurts me if it comes down, you know, to the to the division title in a couple weeks. So um, we match up well. You know, obviously he's putting up points. I'm putting up points. Um, so, hey, let's go. Let's do it. You know, the, you know, the top two in the East are going to battle it out and, uh, there's going to be some scars. There's going to be battle wounds. There's going to be shock and awe and someone's going to come out on top and, uh, hopefully it's me. All right. Sounds like Sal's, Sal's pretty much tempting Brian for a little, okay, corral shootout, a little gunslinger right outside the saloon to settle it. AKA, can we step outside? Anyway, whoop ass ink. Two impressive weeks, nothing to show for it. What are your expectations this week as you try to send Gridiron Grudge Match, yes, to a seventh straight loss? You know what? To tell you the truth, no problem. All right, right to the point. Is that a guarantee yeah. win, Whoop Ass Inc.? Are you guaranteeing a win on week eight? Is that what you're saying? No. What I'm saying is that uh, uh, it's going to be another loss for, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what's, what's the game's team again? Great Iron Grudge Match. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Team. You oh that that's dude. That is a diss of 
Oh, oh he well. did that. He did that purposely. He said that purposely. And I'm the host of this 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 podcast, and now I'm taking it personal, which I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> I'm supposed to be objective. I've been doing this for 30,000 years and now I have to take it personal. I'm going to I'm going to play this back and listen to this. <laughs> Bulletin board material, buddy. Bulletin board material. Well, this is only the second time in league history that the father and son, I did look it up, 2011 week 10, you both scored 64 points, landed on the podcast and I did it separately, but this is now the first time ever that I had both GMs on the same time due to technology on the most points for the week podcast. And what is the phrase that pays what Bass Inc. If you want to get on this show, what do you have to do to get on this show? Well, I have to look at it like this. To get on the show, I'm going to have to win out. Okay, and also score the most points for the week to get on this show. Well, uh, the way I look at it, my team is starting to starting to do it. So, uh, so you're saying you're going to be back again next week there, Whoopi? Straight A Skippy, dude. Oh, all right. I'll, I like very confident, very confident. Sal might have something to say about that, or maybe the other six GMs might have something to say about it. All right, I know Sal has uh, plans going on this evening, so we're going to have to end this uh, podcast. This has been very entertaining, very good trash talk between father and son, great debate. I uh, just want to thank you both for your contributions to the league. Uh, so um, hopefully maybe we'll see you guys again very soon on this show with uh, seven weeks to go. One quick thing. Drive for five, buddy. I look forward to it. Drive for five. I when I offered you a position in this league, it wasn't you know we needed an open slot and I just needed another whipping boy in the East Division. So uh, welcome, but uh, I'm gonna have to teach you a lesson. Who's the real uh, GM in this league? Okay, buddy. I'll see you on Sunday. There you go. Parting shots from the six shooters. All right. Thank you guys for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Later, boys. Thank you.